brief overview. I, I was kind of looking and was hoping that Gus Steves would be here, but unfortunately, um, uh, a couple of things that have that have um, transpired since the, uh, the public meeting that was held. Uh, one one component was that uh, we heard some of the concerns about people that elderly folks that had not received the previous warning to get a two hundred fifty dollar ticket. So what we wanted to do was to uh, to make sure that this was designed to kind of go after people that were more uh, repeat offenders. So the, the Board of Health had started to keep uh, information on the number of contacts that we have, who got a letter, who got warnings, who got a, a mailer on the front door. And then they were to make a recommendation to the hearing officer the hearing officer to reduce the fine from $250 down to a fine of, of uh, more of a written warning. Uh, so they were supposed to just provide a recommendation. The hearing officer was given instruction uh, through policy by himself or through administrative um, directives to, to implement that because that was always the intent was to educate first and fine second. So we, we made an effort to do that. Uh, secondly, we, we have also put forth, uh, we do have quite a few uh, appeals that have come in, so we do have a <coughs> proposal that will be uh, coming up to the council uh, for their consideration in regards to appointing additional, additional people to be municipal hearing officers so we can deal with the, the volume. Uh, that will be, I think it's going to be in the package this Thursday, so I'm not going to get into that because you guys can review it and get back. But I think the idea was to, um, we, we have been collecting information on how many folks got, how many contacts they had with the town, and then those folks that had limited uh, contacts with us, we, we you know, the Port of Health and the Health Department were recommendation to hearing officer to reduce those fines. In my review, I just took a spot sample uh, probably about two thirds of them had anger from two to three to I think as high as seven contacts before they sent out a, a fine. So the education piece was fairly robust and I think really was serving the intended purpose. The other part to it is that the police officers will now only look at those homes that have received um, repeat notices. So they will not just on their own find issues, they will respond to locations that have not responded favorably to the education component. So I think we've made an effort to hone in the uh, enforcement efforts of this and to do uh, more in line with, I think, what, our, what actually was the original intent of administration was, was to educate for, first and then enforce second. And those changes have helped to refine that process. And that's all I really have in terms of uh, specifics for, for general for uh, traffic enforcement cases. But I know really the point of tonight was twofold. One was Mr. Buxton wanted to approach, and I know that was one of the issues. So as a follow up on that, I still um, comment on our discussions. My concern is the, uh, you know, the lot of concerns that the landlords are having and the compliance being the occupants, the tenants, the people actually breaking the rules. Um, compliance, I find, needs to be more engaged to that part of it. And if the landlords can help to identify the tenants that are being most unwilling to change, then I think our enforcement efforts need to be focused on the actual resident themselves as the bylaw implicates. And, um, and I will hold forward to that and, and see how this, some of these changes move forward, but I'm not going to, I voted on something in regard to a bylaw that was stated in regard to tenants and occupants and landlords, and I expect the residents who utilize our services, and not just the landlords who provide a place for them to, to uphold those rules. So I'll just continue on that mantra for a while, and, and uh, hopefully we can get this under control and get the worst offenders mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to comply. So, Council McDonald first. Just to explain, I have two questions. How many total <coughs> tickets uh, through you to the town manager? How many total tickets were issued in the period that enforcement began? At the last count that I saw, it was about 330. And how many were appealed? 
That was the total of tickets issued. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the number of appeals were. I heard in the range of 160. I just don't know. In the range. Thank you. Council Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for you to Mr. Clark, I guess, or any councilors that are present. Mr. Clark, have you had a lot of complaints about outside Southbridge people just bringing in and dropping off trash and putting it in the front of um, two and three deckers and even private homes? So I'm starting to get a number of phone calls. Yeah, I know, I know that um, we've had some information, and I know that the gentleman from Green Brown has actually conducted some um, sting operations, but it has, it monitored those situations. And so as those come up and as the tenant, if the landlord or the tenant believes that's the case, you should absolutely positively let the Board of Health or the Health Department know because that can be what one of the things that we would do in that circumstance is the gentleman from Green Brown would go out, open the bag, and if there's evidence, let's just say a Connecticut address, then that homeowner or, or landlord would not be fine. So we are looking at those um, specific cases, and I know that in that circumstance, when they go out and they do an investigation, if it's in fact proven that it's from a <coughs> then we're attempting to, but well, we're not definitely not penalizing people for that. Uh, but in terms of the enforcement effort for folks that are in Connecticut, I, I'd have to check with uh, the police to see if, what remedies we potentially have against folks that are from Connecticut. Okay, thank you. We're going to continue with the, the committee first and then we'll get to the citizens. Uh, so, Councilman Kevin. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. In answer to the question asked by Councilman Marcucci, which I thought was a good one, yes, I've gotten that same complaint. In fact, one person that spoke to me about it reminded me that at the meeting I had questioned, I think it was the police chief or somebody at the podium when, this, when I expressed some concern about this, and we were told that the police officer would open the bag and look at it to make that determination. And this particular resident said that wasn't the case, but they said that this is happening. I've heard it now from three different people over the last two weeks where somebody has come by and dropped a bag off in front of their home. To that point, that's something that we've talked about for quite some time now, a couple of years, actually. Just this, that's come up. And I know that Kim Grant and uh, before her, Melissa, they had all talked about going out to homes where people were complaining about this and opening up. And we, we've talked about this at council in front of the, the TV. And with, in order for us to have compliance, we need to get more input from the from the tenants, the landlord, where we're seeing this happen so that we can actually get the bag before it's taken away or, or whatever the problem is. But certainly, I've encountered the same comment by a landlord recently. Um, say the tenants are great, they have their number of containers and everything, but, um, you know, an extra bag. And I said, well, is there any, if your tenants see something happening, you have, we have to work together. Um, as far as the, my understanding would not be that a police officer would, would open the bag unless he had a reason to open the bag. He would just assume it belongs with the trash. So they still need to, they still need to um, uh, let us know if, if they feel that they've got their ticket. Um, no, I'm probably of course. So, I mean, um, I know that Dick Greenbrier was supposed to be investigating more than King Grant. But that was, again, my experience of complaining about this for quite a while. one follow-up question to that, because the, the thing that comes to mind is, in doing so, to what extent do we have concerns of invasion of privacy in doing it? Probably and I asked that question previously. Once it's on the curb, it's trash. It belongs to what you know, it's, it is disposed of. So I asked that same question previously. Thank you. I think what we've had here with this um, Brown Green Consulting in here is there's, there's been a zeal to the job, which you know somebody's excited to do the job and do it well, and, and I understand that, but it's put a fear throughout the community. They're afraid that if they do something wrong, they're going to get hit with a $250 fine. Mr. Clark's explained how we've tamed that down, and we've got a process now to do warnings first, so it's not going to be just the first time you get a mistake, you get hit with this thing, and I think that's the right direction. But the other component of this is the amount of the fine. It's $250, and I don't think there's anybody out there that feels like that's reasonable. How do we go about changing that? Good point, and to, to our conversations previously, too, Mr. James, I do appreciate you bringing it up, because 
we've commented on this, a number of us have. Some of us don't see it the same, and that's you know, independent uh, opinion on that. But I always thought the fine was too high also, and I would have liked to have seen it either <coughs> graduated, or I'd like to have seen it, you know, that no more than <coughs> close or to that point. So I'm not sure if it's in that, a matter of motion from this subcommittee to put it on another agenda item, whether it can be brought up under this agenda item or not at this moment. But I certainly um, do not see the need to be uh, $250 and, uh, and then reduce it half anyway, or, you know, I think, I think we can come more in line. And that, I actually get a lot of comments from landlords saying, if it were more reasonable, it wouldn't hurt us so much. I would feel the stand would maybe, maybe I just pay it and not worry about it because I gotta buy a dumpster and do something anyway. And, and, I, and I hear what they're saying. Of course, compliance is, our, is what we're trying to do here. Um, and, and I don't have a problem with that reduction. And right now, bylaw review committee is doing their thing, but obviously, this is something that's enforcement. We voted as a council to, to do, go to 50, I believe, on the fine. I don't know if that was, was that, uh, no? That was no, no council action. Though. So we, we chose the, the 250 bylaw. fine. It's in the bylaw. It's well, just, just to comment on the 250, and I asked this question, because quite honestly, it's a good yes, question, and, and it's, it's very high. Yeah, you know, I answered at the public meeting, mm -hmm. but not necessarily perhaps for, for everyone that's <coughs> here this evening. When I asked the question, where did the 250 come from? And I guess it was a junk car bylaw that if people had too many registered vehicles in their car in their yard, that the town went and initially they did fines of twenty five dollars, fifty dollars, seventy five dollars, and people were basically <coughs> so the town. This is probably twenty years ago. I mean, as Nick Tortoise who's been with us for over twenty five years, and one of the related stories. So it's, it's probably over twenty years that this thing has been in place. That in order to get people, they they. I don't know, it was a bylaw committee or some group. The council obviously has to amend the new bylaw, so at some point it had to be council action that they presented and they said, well, what is the number that's going to compel us to change the behavior? And the number that they reached was $250. And if you drive around town, there's not that many junk vehicles on the streets anymore because that fine was deemed to be sufficient to get people's attention and not to get their attention, but to change their behavior. So, on this, that bylaw that is structured, and I think it's structured a little differently, where a whole bunch of laws fall under that. So the 250 change, I think it has to be thought it through. Is it just going to be for this, or is it going to be for the other ones that that acts as the, the enforcement tool on? That if you were to reduce it down, you could be moving in a direction where you are going to have people that will just say, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. The one thing I would just say, and, and I, I know this isn't going to be a popular thing to say, but in doing the education piece alone, we had between 30 and 50 calls a day for trash violators. Once the enforcement really started in earnest in, in February, those numbers have gone down to, to even some days none. So, you know, the number of folks that that have got the fines even since that public meeting has significantly dropped. And like I said, we are just focusing on the worst offenders. And if you take away that tool to change behavior, now what are the worst offenders going to do? So I just, I think some thought has to be given, obviously, whatever direction the council wants, and I'm more than happy to, to work with it. And that wasn't something I inherited, so I, I'm just articulating what I heard. Uh, but I think it's something that the council, quite honestly, should give some thought to. And if that number is a lesser number, then certainly we can pursue how to change that. So I do that. Well, we, we, we've That's got it. their attention, yeah, but I, I still think it's too big a hand we're hitting them with. And if it's a motion that it takes to, to be able to get it on a future agenda, I'd like to make that motion. And, and to that point, you know, going with your rationale, the 250 jump cars and such, going back to discussion we had in an August meeting in terms of snow compliance, it went 25.50, and, and that's a daily scenario with parking, for instance, and it's a $50 fine. This is a weekly scenario with trash, not a daily issue. It's, it's something they have to comply with weekly. So I see it being more than 50, but seeing that 250 being just not not a reasonable number for this community. And, and I certainly would support a lower amount in that. So, I, I, again, um, I'm not sure where they come from. I'll this motion at some point to get sure. that. Put it on a future agenda. Or a future agenda. agenda. I have a motion. Yeah. So, so yes. Is we that have, not the way it's done? No, it's a bylaw. Actually, 
Council right, can't. but we can review, we can make a motion to entertain the reduction of the, the fee structure. And so we have a second. So discussion on that, we can go go ahead. Uh, actually, Councilman uh, Nicola had her hand up before. Well, I won't just go there. Um, I believe that the two hundred and fifty dollar fine is exactly what it should be. If you are in violation and you receive a warning, you now know that you're in violation. If you continue to do it, pay your two hundred and fifty dollar fine. Maybe you won't do it again. Behavior changing is not an easy thing. Getting people to get rid of their junk cars instead of leaving them on their property or putting them halfway between their property and their neighbor's property was not an easy thing to do. It didn't happen overnight. Think this would happen overnight? I'm not surprised that people are up in arms about this. They've been allowed to get away with doing just what they've pleased for 20 years. So all of a sudden, we're enforcing a bylaw that a lot of people wanted enforced as opposed to other things that were brought forward as an initiative to get this whole program started. All I heard for months was just enforce what's on the books <clears throat> or enforcing what's on the books. And when it burns you, you complain about it. And I expect that. I was very upset to hear that people were getting $250 fines and not a warning. And when I brought it up with the manager and he looked into it himself, he found out that that really wasn't the case. That a lot of these $250 fines came after warnings. So I guess if I got a warning <coughs> that I was in violation of a trash law and that the, the fine was going to be $250, I wouldn't need another warning to change my behavior. But that's me. I mean, that seems like common sense to me. Um, I've seen a market change in the way Worcester Street looks, the way Mechanic Street looks. I live down that section, and I know what the streets look like on a daily basis, and I know what they look like on trash day, <coughs> and they don't look like that anymore. So it's getting through to some people, and that's what it's intended to do. So I don't have a problem with $250, because if you've been warned in advance that that's what's going to happen, if you continue to violate the law. That's what happens. I don't, I, you know, and I don't have $250 to burn. So if I choose to violate the law and not care, I get what I get. I won't support the change in, in, and that's just me. I'm only one of nine, but I won't be supporting it, and that's my reason. Okay, we're going to go back to Councilor Joe, we're going to get to the citizens too. We just generally try to get our councilors to speak to them. Maybe we'll answer your question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I got a couple of things. First, to answer directly to Mr. James's question, it's covered under Section 6 of Chapter 2 of the Charter, and uh, which is under the purview of the Council. <coughs> All bylaws have to be approved by the Council. They have to be approved by the legislative body of the Mass General Laws, but it says that they shall deal only with one subject and introduce in writing and the form required for final adoption, so they have to have the right legal term. I intend to, I expressed at the last meeting, and I'm going to follow through with that. I intend to modify it based on the input I've gotten. And I, I'll tell you, I've received quite a few calls, just as my colleagues have, I'm sure. And uh, there were more than, there was people who had the first offense fined for $250. These people were not exaggerating. Right. In the case, in one particular person who called me, they received several different fines, and it wasn't even their address that was the problem. It was a, a, a misapplication. And uh, I mean, the, the, white, the white elephant in the room, it's got to be poked. I mean, we came right out and said when, when there was a failure of the passage of the smart card that we we're going to enforce this. And it, that's the impression <coughs> the public has. That's the impression that I have. Uh, the comment was made even to two, two or three town council meetings at the end that, uh, well, this wouldn't happen if the smart card wouldn't be passed. And that's just not acceptable to punish people because they were against I, that, I, I, I said perception, I, Madam Chair, I said perception. That's right. why I use my words very carefully. I'm saying what the perception as relate to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I intend to uh, modify the law based upon input that I received from citizens that they thought would be more reasonable. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to follow through with that. And all it takes is an affirmative vote of at least five minutes. If it's not going to be on the agenda for the full meeting, there is a provision in the town council rules to have it done. That's, that's just all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I appreciate those comments. And just keep in mind, 
I believe this still would be, there still would be fine issues happening even with smart card because what would happen is there still would be non-compliance by some people who would the system. So now, and, and in terms of um, supporting something from my side, uh, uh, my uh, opinion or my, my thought on that, once, once you change a number, you have to still stand behind the enforcement. We have to say, we, we've heard you, we understand the numbers, but we still have to do our, our due diligence here for the entire community and not allow um, those who are, choose to ignore our bylaws to do just that. So that's, uh, we, we still have to deal with our enforcement regardless of smart card or regardless of how much the fine is that needs to be enforced, just like the parking tickets have to be enforced. And ultimately it becomes a criminal offense on the, on the record if they choose to ignore it and not pay it. So it, it, the weight will be on them eventually. Thank you for your input, I appreciate that. All right, Councilor Cole, do you want to say something again? I forgot what it was. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now, I know I saw hands up all over the place. I saw Mr. Hesperian's hand up. Yes, Council Pet, yeah. this person? Okay. Yeah, right. All right. Um, well, I, I just want to mention a couple things. I think, um, again, I, I'd like to implore you all to reconsider um, going back to a, an incentive-based system rather than a punitive system. I think the punitive system <coughs> is going to lead to a lot of false numbers, for one, because uh, I've talked to a lot of landlords in town, and I think the, the consensus among landlords is you, you can rent a dumpster for $299. You rent a dumpster and then let people throw anything they want into it. That creates a couple of issues. It, it doesn't reduce the recycling rate at all. It gives false numbers on the recycling rate. And then additionally, um, it brings a lot of other haulers driving <coughs> through the streets of town to pick up these dumpsters. And I'd also really like if the town <coughs> could go back and look at, at the contract that we have with Casella, which provides for the services that uh, Green Brown is, is currently doing and was written into a contract that we had negotiated. I think if you go back and you look at, at what we're actually supposed to be doing through the Casella contract, there was no need for these trash cops, for uh, independent contractors. The services there were already written in and negotiated for uh, during that time. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll try, let's see. I guess you have to ask me about at some point before. <coughs> yeah, Mr. Casper, thank you for your considerate comments on the incentive program. That is in the site assignment. Yet yeah, it's ignored. Another thing in the site assignment, we're supposed to have a recycling coordinator, not for the town of Southbridge, but for the towns that bring trash to Southbridge. And I haven't checked this week, but it's my understanding that we claim, I, I've heard this before in meetings, that uh, the uh, trash, uh, so the, the uh, landfill contractor says they have a recycling program there, so that we don't have to have our trash uh, or our recycling coordinator do anything in those towns. But she's required to by the site assignment. It's not to be the recycling coordinator for Southbridge. It's to be the recycling coordinator for the other towns. Now, I understand initially Mr. Clark was being creative. In the initial first years, we had a recycling coordinator, but there were no other towns but Southbridge. And those first years are allowed to bring their waste there. So I can see why she was working on a, a recycling program in Southbridge. But now that other towns are allowed to bring their waste in, According in black and white, it's not even somewhere I think where a lawyer can twist the words of this one. It's, she's supposed to be doing work in the towns that bring the waste there. And I wish that would, I know now it's sort of like the town manager's department is running this where it doesn't seem like the Board of Health is running our trash program as much. And I have a hard time understanding, even after all these years, the whys and how comes of why the town manager sometimes does something or why. The Board of Health does it, but the bottom line is, it doesn't matter who's directing it; it matters that it gets done. And if we have a hundred percent compliance in this town, we're only protecting four percent of what goes into the landfill. The other ninety-six percent needs to be monitored, and uh, that's why Kim is there, and I, and I hope she gets to start doing that. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, Kathy, this time, Councilman Cole, I missed you when I flipped over to last The only thing I, I just wanted to bring up because I heard this. <coughs> mentioned many, many times is the, the, the great alternative to all of this is the incentive program. But I've gotten phone calls too. 
And not one person that was complaining was complaining that they got a violation. They were by they got a ticket because they weren't recycling properly. It's all about trash. Bags that are outside of the barrel, not not no barrel, um, no cover. It has absolutely nothing to do with recycling, with the incentive program. It has to do with people not knowing how to put their trash out. That's why people are getting this $250 fine. It has nothing to do with whether they're sorting their, their recyclables. So the incentive program is a moot point here. It is not the answer to this problem. It certainly wasn't the answer when, it, when we had the incentive program. You still had trash all over the streets. So I don't see the incentive program as the answer to what we're doing now. I think we need to let this thing try to work. And there are people who, yeah, they get burned, they get mad. My question goes through you to Councillor McDonald, who's gotten all these phone calls from people who have been erroneously um, ticketed. Have they gone and appealed their tickets? Have they gotten their tickets taken care of? What's been the, what's the, the end of that story? The disposition, I only know of two of them, I believe they did get their appeals. So they did get their appeals because they were wrongly ticketed, and the town did is that, am I right? Is that the? They got their appeals because they went before the, as I understand. Oh, a few of them went through me. Mm -hmm. Few of them went through me. There was no hearing. And they got them, them taken away because they didn't receive any kind of warning. One person was getting ticketed. It wasn't even her trash. What? Um, they called me and I, I made a phone call. Um, but the, my point is that to continue to bring up the recycling incentive program, doesn't, it's like talking literally about apples and oranges. It is not what this is doing. It is not what is making people unhappy. It's the fact that they don't know how to put their trash in a barrel and put a cover on it, or somebody's putting, going through their trash and making a mess of it, or outer towners are coming along and putting a bag on top of their trash or on the side of it, and that's why they're getting these tickets. It doesn't have to do with somebody going up opening the barrel and going, oh my god, there's plastic and paper in here. It, it's, it's supposed to go in this. That's not what's happening. We haven't even reached that level. All they're trying to do right now for compliance is get somebody to put a trash barrel with a cover on it in front to remove. And that's where, where they are right now. So I don't see where the incentive program is even on the table. And that's all we have. Good point made, and, and I agree with your complaint with the compliance and what we are enforcing and not enforcing at this point. Okay, I know, Mr. Uh, I'm going to let Mr. Zoto's question because Sorry, that's because he's has been for a long time. Would you like to make a point on that? Is that uh, oh, I, had I had a point of clarification. I, Just I'm kind of confused as to, to what, it, what does the bylaw say specifically about fines as far as a warning versus. <coughs> fine, then how do we adjudicate it if it's supposed to be an adjudicatory process that stems from a public hearing officer or somebody calling one of us and then they make a phone call? That seems to me to be highly irregular. Let me explain. I'll explain to you. I'll, make, I'll explain that to you. A woman called me who said, I got a ticket for my trash and I can't understand why. I put my barrel out there with a cover. I came home from work. There was the barrel with the cover on it and it was empty. How did I violate a rule? And she told me where she lived. And she told me what it said on the ticket. And it had her address on the ticket, but she swore up and down it wasn't her trash. So what I did was I checked with the assessor's office. They looked up the name, the, the address. And when they look up the address, they got a picture. Well, what the guy did, what they gave her the ticket was, here's the trash in a driveway. Here's her house over here. Here's her driveway. You see the picture of the trash, and in the background you see her house number, but he didn't walk over and see that her driveway's over here. This belonged to the guy over here, and it happened to her twice. And that's how I got involved. And in those circumstances, if we do get calls early enough in the process, and there's an obvious error made such as that, then, then they are being rectified. That's in, that's in the fair, which would go No, it's not. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Sutter. I just have a simple question. Does anybody in the room know what Sturbridge fines are, Charlton's fines are, or Webster's? <coughs> I'll tell you this. My sister lives in Sturbridge. Yeah. She pays $248 a year for trash to be picked up every other week. 
So if she got her trash picked up every week like we do, she paid five hundred dollars a year. You pay zero. Fine. Well, one, one, my question was. I don't know about fines. Okay. I know that she. Does that's what she know? pays. Does anybody in the room know what the local towns are? Yes. Maybe we should find out just to get closer to this. I know it's a dollar bag. Yeah, no, just, but I mean, those towns aren't like us. I'm talking about Sturbridge, Webster, and Chalton. If well, we, knew, trash trash. we know those three numbers, maybe it would give us a... It's a different story. They don't have the what is the fine for trash? Do they have one? I don't know. I'm just asking. Probably not, because it's it's all picked up by private haulers. They don't. They, they have to pay to have their trash removed. You don't. I don't. But if all the trash was on the road, don't know. And they came along. Don't know. They must have a, really they must have a number like we do. Maybe. Oh, I, just, I don't know. I, just I don't ask. know. I like what you did, Kathy. I thought that was great. Well, I don't want that. No, I don't. I used to live in Okay, we're going to let Mr. James answer the question. I just know that when I lived in Charlton, if I didn't comply with how it was supposed to be picked up, I didn't pick it up. There you go. It's <laughs> not a nice idea for yourself. Yeah. Oh, it sucked. Yes. <laughs> Miss, the, 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 uh, uh, I'm a little bit troubled, but I, I, I'm sure that the, 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 the council chairwoman, had, out of the goodness of her heart, of charity, stepped in the way of, uh, of the law and due process. I believe that. Want to put the cuffs on me now, Jim, or after? Please. I, I, I'm, I'm being Go respectful. Ahead. I'm being respectful. I'm being respectful. There was a term special favors used earlier, Mr. Sotelis. I didn't say special. No, I, I never you, said that. I'm saying there was a term earlier. No, I, I, I can understand what she did. Make the movie. But there is a process, and if that process is not available to all citizens, then it's wrong. Yeah. They should. The, the process, even though the person was wrongly accused, it must go its length. It must go through due process. Let me tell you something. Well, I'm not arguing a point with you, madam. Please, 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 madam, I'm not arguing a point. I'm, I'm saying it to you. I want order. And this okay. is order. Well, let me finish and then you can speak. Counselor, please. Just, can we just make sure one's finished? I mean, no disrespect. You just need one to finish. Please. I don't mean no disrespect. I'm saying to you the law. We have to, we're a, com we're a government okay. of laws. Let's, let's stay that way. I think that Appreciate what that. she did okay. was a nice act. And it was, it, it's to be commended, but I think in the future we should stick to the due process. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sotili. It's been encouraged that the due process, if people find a violation happening at that moment at their home, to call the Board of Health. So they got a ticket in here. The Board of Health could have done the exact same thing. Anybody, it's not through the hearing. It was due process to say there's been a violation right now in the state. Please come and investigate. And they have the right to then do the same thing. That what all she did was investigate. And then they took care of it. She didn't do it. I'm not blaming you. Councilor Nicola, okay. Councilor Nicola, do you want to respond? <laughs> Simply that a town councilor's job is to take calls, field calls. We field them seven days a week, all hours of the day. It doesn't matter what's going on. And when I get a phone call, because unlike a lot of councilors, I don't get a lot of calls, or at least I don't say I get a lot of calls. When I get a phone call, I get involved. I get in the car, I drive to wherever it is the uh, problem is, look at it with my own two eyes and see what's going on. And then if it's not on a Friday night at 7 o'clock or a Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, I call the town hall and try to speak to the manager about it or find who the person is that can help. And that's what I did in this case and was able to come up with a solution before it ever went any further, especially since she got to it. And that's what I did. But my answer simply regarding process is counselors, receive calls about all kinds of things. We're expected to fix neighbor spats when two people who live next door to each other don't get along <coughs> and they, they both perceive a piece of property to be theirs. We're expected to be involved in that. I have been called because a woman was being um, verbally and physically abused in her apartment building by her landlord and one of her neighbors, and what could I do to help her? I've been called by people who are, have disabilities, and can I come and give them a ride? I can't begin to tell you the calls that I've gotten in the past seven years. And you try to do what you can. You don't say, I can't help you, and hang up, or protocol doesn't allow me to help you, and you'll have to wait till Monday morning at 8 o'clock. 
because most of the phone calls I get are on the weekend. So I do what I can. And I'm not looking for, for anybody's pat on the back. I do it because for the same reason I'm a counselor. And that's, and that's it. If I broke protocol, I'm not apologizing for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me some time. Um, I, I always appreciate um, the previous speaker's uh, candidness. Um, it's shocking sometimes, but it's always candid and it's always up front. Um, and uh, uh, it was clear she wanted a punitive system. That hasn't changed. It you was know, very. Mr. Pinnitus, we're not going um, to be opinionated. It, that's not, no, I mean, it, it's not an opinion. She just stated her. She stated how she felt. I'm just restating how she felt. That was always very clear. It still hasn't changed. I appreciate that it hasn't changed. Um, my, my comment is to the rest of the committee and to the rest of the council that voted for this punitive system. Um, we warned you guys that, uh, I'm sorry, we warned the council that there would be additional dumping. We warned of a lot of things that would happen as a negative effect of a punitive system. Um, and, and it seems very odd that, you know, come around this time that we're suddenly shocked and, and uh, uh, are backtracking a little bit about this system. We don't want fines. The fines have been stated for years. That hasn't changed. You never vote on fines. They were clearly there. So either, either the council is not reading and understanding what they're voting on, um, clearly they're not listening to the, they weren't listening to the people that were speaking, um, but it, I just want to point out that it just seems very odd that, you know, come around June time, suddenly we want to do something about what we did. You took an action. I appreciate, I appreciate the, counts, the previous councilors um, forth, forthright uh, stating that her opinion hasn't changed. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, the rest of the counselors, suddenly it's changed. Thank you for uh, doing what's expected. Madam Chair, if, if I could, if the um, Board of Health that you just provided us with the that I was reading through. Now, under the, the old system, that was the incentive program, and we were at 16 to 18% in South America. As of last week, the week of May 7th, the diversion rate, which means that you take into account compost, bulk, and everything else, was 48.46%. The recycling rate was 40.54%. And to me, in all due respect to, the, to some of these speakers, the speaker said, why don't you just do enforcement, or education and enforcement? And what has been devised, and what was voted, I think it was a 72 vote as a council, was to do education and enforcement. And, you know, I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't think we would get these numbers. So, I mean, it's, it's a system that the council, as the majority, voted. And, you know, the numbers are what the numbers are. I think people can say that we can live with it, however. But the difference between 18% and 48%, you know, I don't care what, you know, statistically, I mean, that's significant. So, what we're doing is having an impact in the arena in which, in the policy arena in which the council wanted to have an impact. And I think that that message, you know, needs to be understood. And in terms of the numbers, again, just, you know, we have 6,000 households, and if we have 330 tickets of an issue, you know, we're still in the low single digits for people that are violating it. And I think, you know, drive around the community, and, you know, you have to have your eyes closed on to see that it is making Thank you. I'm glad you had those numbers. That's yeah, some exactly. of my questions. I know that we've, we've brought these numbers up before. We've talked about the increase in recyclables. We've talked about the decrease in trash going, the tonnage going in over the last few months because of some of the enforcement. And we've also talked kind of at nausea now, which is an interesting term, yeah. in terms of illegal dumping, which I've brought up time and time at numerous meetings, which I'm sure we would have tapes of, um, in terms of you know, trying to get that. And we've had other counselors say, um, I don't, you know, we should have as much trash as we want to dump, and that's a shame. But I, I know that we need to have compliance. Um, and again, you know, accusations can be made for the good of the camera, but it's a shame if we go back and actually look at, um, listen to tapes or listen to minutes. Uh, there are continuous concerns. Do the concerns keep you from moving ahead? Do they paralyze you? No. You still have to move ahead, and you still have to make it a stand and find it, will that work? And then you have to listen to the community and you have to listen to the public some more and you have to say, is it working? Can we tweak it? All along through this process, 
meeting after meeting after meeting, the concern. There's no, there's no, there's no special time on this. It's just this is the way we've been enforcing just for the last two months, and we're dealing with the issues of enforcement for the last few months. So I mean, there's no backtracking on anything. It's certainly what it is. We're dealing with an issue that's happening whatever time of year, November, June, December. It was going to happen once we started to actually enforce. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. So. Council Mark Pucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Clark, are those numbers just from last month? Because I believe so I've read them higher. Seven. Right. I, I believe, because I read this all the time, as you know, because I can I certainly know. complain to you, um, that we've been in the 70s and 80 percent of recycling. We receive it weekly right in our mouth. And our um, packet and I was astonished at some of the numbers that we've been 70, 78, 82 percent. So the numbers are definitely um, productive. It's you know it's not a broken system, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you for your concern, Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. Yeah, I know it's you're on the agenda. I would like to get to yes, Mr. Bucks and I, and, you know. I I urge the committee and the councilors uh, to. Uh, review Section H of the Landfill Extension Agreement. Mm -hmm. It's the scope of service. Mm -hmm. uh, my comments tonight as far as trash issues uh, stem around um, over a year ago I started to mention to Ms. Grant the, the matter of upside down trash barrels. After the hauler dumps the trash, he, dump, he puts the barrel upside down. Uh, I always see it as a potential for littering uh, under in section H in 2.7 residential refuge will be placed at the front edge of property at the curb line empty containers shall be put back upright in the same location now I'll have to correct myself a lot of people had comments about lids they do have the ability to throw your lid wherever they want to they do not have the ability to tip your barrel upside down leaving trash on your curb when you come to take your barrel away. I urge the council, there's a lot in this 10-page document. One of the things is the hauler is supposed to be issuing yellow stickered warnings to the residents, not a police, police officer on overtime. I urge you, read Section H of the Landfill Agreement, and let's start enforcing our hauler to do a better job and to follow the rules. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on that note, I think we've had all the update we need to on the trash enforcement on the report on the Oh, sorry, Mr. Jensen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we have a motion. That was a lot of. Yeah, right. Sorry about that. I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Discuss to to, to discuss and further and entertain at a future meeting for the schedule for the trial. Just the trial, just the fine mechanism. Right, the fine mechanism. Okay, um, so um, at, any other fine structure. Fine structure. Yeah, we use the word structure. Is it a fee schedule? Uh, fee schedule for yeah. fine structure. Fine. Same thing. Yeah. Works. Okay, we're good on that. Any further discussion on that particular yeah. motion? All right, all those in favor? Opposed? That's so unanimous. Okay. Now we're going to move forward to uh, agenda item four, which is a recycling concept, concepts presentation by uh, Mr. Buxton. Um, whatever you got to present, feel free. We'll look all right, to first of all, I'm going to apologize. Uh, I, I'm legally blind and I'm having some computer problems right now, so you're going to receive my hand scribble. Uh, I write big enough so if you can share copies. Um, yeah, I'll let you pass them to yourself. All right. Yeah. Well, I can look at, I can, I can use Evelyn's for now, right? Or you're sharing with me. Yeah. Who's sharing with Paula? Okay, we got enough? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I know it's like we're going to go through this real quick. Appreciate the large print. I, I, I certainly did not have the intention of handing a turnkey gets close to um, system to the town. Uh, this is just a concept. Uh, I realize uh, 
over the last three years, I've been racking my brains, actually the last five years, trying to come up with some uh, some sort of recycle reward program um, since the recycle bank passed, passed away. Uh, I'll just I'll just read through it. The recycle reward concept is is built around four items. Um, one, assess value of the curbside pickup contract, which is six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay, that's yeah. established within the landfill agreement. That's what our curbside pickup value is to the town. Number two, the established recycle reward account, which is one dollar per household unit per month, a total of seventy-two thousand dollars. Now, since the recycle bank uh, was eliminated, that seventy-two thousand dollars still exists. Each year, it's paid. It, it's referred to as a recycle reward account, and is presently located, I think, in the Department of Health budget. Uh, in the past, it's been used for sixty thousand dollars for ThinkReduce.com. I believe the green and brown contract came from the same funds. All right. Um, the number of household units. The landfill extension agreement uh, initially is six thousand units. Um, I believe there is a potential, if it need be, for the town to negotiate up to seven thousand. But I assume presently we're within the six thousand range. So there's that. The number of residents. The fourth thing is the number of residents who choose to register for the household rewards and the unclaimed rewards. All right. Those. I was. I was sorry. I. I put in an information request to the Department of Health, uh, Board of Health, Department, and I was amazed to find that they could not tell me how many households have registered with ThinkReduce.com. Apparently, ThinkReduce.com does not. Um, does not tabulate mm -hmm. the number of households. They tabulate the number of home pickups and, and apparently the number of hits. Number of hits, okay. So, uh, Do you have uh, that number? Just no. No, because the number of hits isn't relative to the number of individual households. No, I hit. understand. I'm just curious, just like many other websites, you know, people mm -hmm. tend to tote the number of hits as a, as a big one. Uh, I forget to add one more thing. Uh, and that is the material picked up curse. All right. Now that material is. I used to try to think of how can we judge trash and recycling and find a value. Uh, I've since come to the conclusion that we don't. We don't separate trash, recycling, or pickup, or yard waste. We treat it all as one. So if you go to page two, all right, the, the reward calculation. Now these are actual figures I received from the Board of Health Department for April 2011 to May 2012. Those are actual tonnage. All right. So if you go down the list of 4,000, 1,000, if you go down the list, you end up with total tonnage picked up for that 12-month period is 6,388 tons and 65 cents. Um, 0.65. That's the total tonnage picked up for that 12 month period. Now, if you take the assessed value of the land uh, curbside pickup contract, which is six, 625,000, divided by the number of tons, you then receive a price per ton. Now, Casella would be very familiar with this price because if Casella is not moving items from point A to point B for less than this, they're losing money. All right. So that that figure, ninety-seven dollars per ton, you then use. You take the ninety-seven dollars per ton times the recycling, which is one thousand two hundred and thirty-two tons, equals one hundred twenty thousand five eighty-three. That's the total amount of, of that, uh, rewards based on the recycling. You then add to that the recycle reward fund, which is seventy-two thousand dollars, 
you come up with a total figure of 192,583. Divide that by the number of households, it comes out with a, um, the annual reward would be $32. Now, to some people, they may say, why would we even try to bring forward a system and have it give our residents $32? Why? Because it's a starting point. And that $32 is reflective of the fact that we're not very good recyclers right now. There's a lot more we can do. But you need to incentivize some of the aspects because I do all the aspects just because I do. I don't need the incentive. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it, but trash and curbside has been my life since 1996. If you look at page three now, here's, here's where it shows the influence of the reward program. All right. I took the same calculations that I used for the 12 months. The only difference was I took 10% of the MSW and, and we decided that we, we reduced our MSW by 10% by putting it into recycling. If you look at the figures now on page two, you can if you look at the total tonnage for the year, there's not that much of a difference. It's only about 35 odd tons difference. However, when you come down and you do the calculation, you look at the price, the price per ton, you still only see about a $1 difference. When you go down to the final calculation, you see we've gone from $32 to $40, $8 difference. Why? Merely because we've reduced, we, we've incentive people to remove more of their recycling out of their MSW and put it into recycling. And we've also incentivized the fact that if you can avoid using bulk pickup, if you can avoid using uh, the lawn and leaf composting waste, if we can avoid citizens who don't need to use those from using them, that's how we incentivize we reduce the negatives to increase the positives. 